Well, thank you so much. Oops, I'm so sorry. I meant to press this button. This button. Thank you so much, Biscuits, for the 229. That is a lovely, wonderful birthday present. And of course, thank you and welcome everyone who's watching, everyone who's in the chat. Christina, Rod, Karen, uh, Biscuits, of course, um, Alien P, and uh, somebody else, Christian. Very nice. Uh, and Dream Lab, of course. Thank you so much for joining me on my birthday. That really means a lot to me. And uh, look at that, this is my YouTube return. Oh my God, Dream Lab, you are the best. Thank you so much. This is awesome. I, my, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I'm touched. This is so cool. Guys, I'm having a wonderful time already. This is, uh, excuse me for blushing. This is, this is very unexpected. You are so nice to me. Thank you, thank you so much. It's awesome. I have, uh, I wouldn't say it's bad news, but uh, there's a little bit of uh, Memorial Day preparation going on today right outside the uh, window. And it's, it's kind of sometimes you may hear kind of a loud noise that's planes flying overhead on Miami Beach. And I guess, you know, they're just practicing for tomorrow. And, you know, maybe they interfere, maybe they don't. Hopefully they won't. My God, that is so nice. Hey, welcome, Normal TV Nerd. That is, that's very nice of you to join us. Hey, how you doing? So today I've got something prepared for you. This is one, but that was a quiet one. The loud one set off the alarm, so it's kind of crazy. David, thank you so much. You guys are hilarious. That is so nice of you. What a wonderful birthday this is already. That is so nice. Thank you, thank you. I've got something prepared for you. Let me show it to you. It is uh, this image here. That is the that was the thumbnail. And also, I think I also need to uh, open my little uh, thing image here. This guy, uh, the pointing device. 
point of focus. Oh, wow, Alien! Oh my god, you guys! That is, that new graphics card will be mine in no time. These are birthday presents. I can't, I can't tell you how exciting that is because the thing is, um, I've had, I've had uh, this wonderful big box of chocolates there already. I've been given the second graphics card for like three weeks to play with. I'm going to have to send it back literally next uh, in the next week. Um, I've met my colon surgeon this morning. Um, that's how I've spent my birthday so far. And uh, to make sure, you know, my cancer isn't coming back. And it isn't. So it looks looks great. We did schedule a colonoscopy just to make sure. And um, I've, I just I just reflected on the on the wonderful time that I've had. I mean, the biggest birthday present that I've got is the fact that I can hang out with you and uh, you know just just be with you and and I'm still here I'm still alive that's what I'm trying to say that's the present and it's it's just awesome and I'm seeing this as a kind of a wider thing uh, because you really have to look at what what life gives you and appreciate those things as presents. And this is why this is completely overwhelming to me. Seriously, this is so cool. So there's the graphics card. There's the box of chocolates. There is the there's these wonderful computers that I get to play with. There's you know the overhead planes. My God, this one's coming through the window now. Oh, this is a formation of four. This was unbelievable. Fantastic, fantastic. And there were there were a few other things that uh, that like yesterday, a small extra break at work. You know those things. I really appreciate those things. And today we're going to make a very appreciative uh, image, which is this one. And uh, that is made with a 3D set that was available uh, at the Das Platinum Club for free. And uh, this is called the Posto Pacifico Platinum Club freebie. If you're a Platinum Club member, you can get this thing for free for a whole week. And what makes this thing special is that I've dialed in the light so that we can see the sun. And Das Studio... Oh, Julia says you can't see me. What, what a shame. You, you just... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. So there we go. You can't see it. Excellent. So uh, this thing is actually coming from the environment settings in Das Studio there. And uh, we're going to see how to make that happen. So the whole sky is made with that. There's no HDRI or anything involved. This is coming from, from Das Studio. So there's the set. There's the character. The character I'm using, I believe, Bethany 8. And she's wearing an outfit by Biscuits and Gordon called the uh, Summer Spirit Outfit. Is that right, Biscuits? I think it is. It's a D-Force outfit, so we're going to do a little bit of D-Force just to drape the skirt. There's a little bit of uh, hair involved. The hair is also by Biscuits. Very exciting product. That's the bow hair product. You can find that in the description of this video. There's links to those products in there. And of course, there's a set, which is the Posto Pacifico. And there's really nothing special about it. There's no light set with it. The only thing I've done is add a bit of out of focus camera here. So we're going to do that as well. Add a little bit of depth of field. Uh, rendered in iray in literally a minute or so this is a very simple scene and i've added just to spruce it up a little bit i've added a point light in the interior here so the scene itself is much bigger than the one that we see right now so let's do this thing welcome uriel bromberg uh, very nice to see you very exciting and thank you so much for all your wonderful, wonderful birthday presents. I can't believe it. This is, this is really nice. Thank you so much. Exciting. Very exciting for me. I'm going to go and open uh, Das Studio here, which look at that. I've still got the scene. So I've only just made that a couple of hours ago. I'm going to go and save it. And tell you what, I'm going to also upload this scene file to my uh, Patreon account. So any of my Patreons can go and grab it. And at least uh, the scene may not load if you don't have the products installed, but it means you can examine the lighting so I'm going to do that later let's go and uh, in fact I'm going to go and close this thing down because if I just start a new scene some of the settings are not the default they're the ones that I've set up so I'm going to go and just you know, do that that's the plan oh it's the blue angels is it thank you so much Julia that's exciting stuff how did you know <laughs> Julia is this 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 enigma of finding information. Very exciting stuff. Uh, thank you so much, Uriel. I'm originally... <laughs> it's how, do you, how do you pronounce your, your name? Oh, you can't tell me because I can't hear you. <laughs> Uriel. Is it Uriel? Is that right? Or is it Uriel? No, Uriel. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you, can, you can type it out phonetically. There we go. It's a bit of a mixed up accent, mine. It's kind of a, it's a German slash British with bits of Americanism in there. Very exciting. It is so noisy in here. I hope you can hear me all right. 
<laughs> Let's try and find that sun and sky setting first. I think that's how I want to start. So explain how, how, do, how do we make that sun disk appear in the scene. So I do that by, this is my 16 by 9 uh, frame here that's just set up with, uh, with this little guy here that is to show the aspect frame in the overall and that it comes from the render setting. So if I head over here under uh, general then I can see that this is my uh, render size. So I can set that to any of the 16 by 9 things and that'll give me that sort of aspect ratio. So full HD is good, HD is also good, uh, quad HD. That comes in handy actually if you want to render at anything higher than 72 dpi so by default das only renders in 72 dpi if you need anything larger than that you have to double the resolution and then import it into photoshop so this uh, technically is 2560 by 1440 at 72 dpi so if you need 150 dpi at 1920 by 1080 this is what you'd load in and this is 4k but you know I, I think in our case let's just stick to 1280 by 720 it makes the render really fast and that's where that aspect ratio comes from so in order for the environment to uh, produce that sun and sky image if we were to just switch this thing over to the iray render port i'm gonna go uh whoops i'm gonna go over and switch one of my graphics cards off just because i don't want the system to blow up i'd love for you to see the the thing render with two rtx 2080s but i don't think that's that's going to be possible if we just switch this thing into the iray render uh, port we see uh, basically nothing and that's you know that's not exactly what we want so we we should we should see something but we see nothing so if i switch this um, this thing on here draw the dome then we'll see that the drone that the, the the sky dome is being drawn can you see that here but that is currently only using an environment map which is the default one that we have in das studio so that's this one here that's the environment map and i can either now go and set this drop down menu to something different so i can either set dome and sky means there's the light dome which is now governed by that image that'll create the light but i can also say uh, ignore any scene lights and draw the dome only or use the sun and sky only or use the scene lights only so in my case i could say scan and sun and sky only scan and sky only sun and sky only and then we'll see something like that so that means i also now see the ground we'll see how to how to uh, blur that out in a moment but we don't see an environment image anymore but the downside to using this setting is that we also now don't see any scene lights anymore so if i wanted to add a point light to my scene later then sun and sky isn't going to help because any lights that i add to it the lights that the, the, the like the effect of the lights isn't going to come out so haha -ha. let's instead use dorm and scene and then that gets us back to this type of image but that's not the effect we want so and um, what the uh, the solution to the puzzle is is to just leave it on dormant sky on dormant scene rather and then get rid of the environment image and you do that by just clicking on the image and then heading over selecting none and the effect of that is now that we have more or less the same as we had in sun and sky but uh, now we can add scene lights to our scene as well which is cool so um we've brushed we've uh, talked about this last time a little bit here in the environment we've got uh, several drop downs here we've got the dome and then we've got the sun and sky menu which you know, gives us the direction and then the sun and then the sky and the intensity and the ground so we're going to talk about all these things but uh, for now let's see if we can turn this into a sunsetty type image and uh, the, the way that works is that we're going to make it slightly later. So currently it is set to a latitude and longitude of, I believe, Utah. We could, David, you brought this up yesterday, or no, yesterday, last week, uh, the longitude and latitude of Miami. Let's use that. And then we'll, we'll use that and see if that longitude and latitude actually works. Um, uh, drop that in the chat and I'll, I'll use that. The day, of course, it's my birthday. So let's use, my, let's use that. It's the may and you can see as you change the months to later in the year the scene actually gets lighter because the days are getting longer and then you get to august and if you increase them even further then the days are getting shorter again you get into this type of territory here but i want to stick with may the 24th and we're going to say 2019 so that's right now aha thank you so much julia very good julia's beat you to it david how exciting. So um, I've never tried the longitude and, um, and latitude. Oh, that's uh, a 
let's have a look at that thank you so much Ron thank you for your link I'm gonna have a look at that later very cool that's of course tomorrow if you want to have if you want to listen to a look at another stream tomorrow subnautica saturday 4 p.m join me for the underwater mesmerizing story of subnautica so i suppose we can go with 25 and then this i don't know should be minus 80 perhaps is that right i'm not sure if we're having a sunset at six o'clock already it should could be could be maybe 80 i don't know could be oh is that is that it could be <laughs> so um let's see if if that is in fact longitude and latitude i suppose it is but you know i've never really tried playing around with these sliders here so uh, if we head over to that time now six o'clock if we make it later than that then we can see that oh no hang on then it gets lighter again that can't be right that can't be right okay i'm abandoning officially abandoning my Longitude and latitude experiment. Yeah, I'm going back to the default coordinates here. Unbelievable. You can, to reset these values, you can either click that little settings thing and set this thing to reset. Or an even easier way to do that is by holding down your Alt key and then just clicking on this slider. So Alt and left click will also reset that value. Nice little tip. They're going to expand on that, I believe, in the in, uh, coming versions of Dash Studio. So now I'm going to increase the time from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And I think 9 o'clock is a good starting point because I can see that things are getting, you know, a little, uh, uh, a little uh, orangey on the, on the sky here. But uh, no matter where I look in the sky, I can't really see the sky disk. Can you see that here? This is obviously the sunset and this is the opposite of that. So I guess this is, uh, where's the sunset? East or west? It's east, isn't it? So this must be east. But uh, right now, I can't see a sun disk. And so the reason for that is that perhaps maybe 9 o'clock is a little too late. We can play around with that. Uh, but also because we need a little bit of haze for the sun disk to appear. And that is something that we can do in one of the other uh, little menus, namely in the sun menu. And if we look at that, we have the sun disk intensity, the disk scale, and we've got the, oh no, actually, sorry, it's under sky. There we go, sky. That's the, so that's, that's on, on the left here, on the, on the, and this is the sun and sky menu. It's under sky, there we go. So that's the haze. If you crank up the haze, then you'll see that the image is getting darker, but you'll also eventually see the disk appear. Can you see that here? So this makes the image slightly darker because now there's a haze effect in there. And that's why I was thinking maybe nine o'clock is a little bit too late. So I guess the disk is already beyond the horizon. So let's head back to the directional menu here and make it perhaps eight o'clock. Whoops, that's 10 o'clock, that's too late. There we go, aha. So eight o'clock will reveal that disk. And if you now head over to the minutes over here and you add additional minutes to it, then you'll see what the sun disk is actually doing. So that's kind of cool. You can time it to the minute and adjust, literally adjust your sun to exactly where you want it to be. I'm gonna leave it at eight o'clock for now and then we can we can see what else we can do there so there's another way that you can turn the sun around once you've framed up your final image but just to make it visible that's one thing you can do and now we can go back to the sky menu here and uh, fiddle around with the sun with the saturation and all that we'll do that for the final image just so that we can see the sun disk come up that's kind of a cool idea there's also un on the sun thing, we can now increase or decrease the intensity, which will uh, change the effect that the sun has. So that's another thing. The uh, disk scales, we can make that thing bigger in the sky and smaller in the sky. So that's another thing that we can do. And we also have the glow intensity. So again, that'll, that'll change the effect that the sky has. By default, I'm just going to go and uh, set these things back to the default value so we can we can adjust them, fine tune them once we've got our scene in. One thing of note though, and it is switched on by default, you need to have a physically scaled sun on. So if you switch that thing off here, then you'll see that sometimes the sun effect is completely going to disappear. So make sure that's on. That's all I wanted to show you. Yes, absolutely, Dreamlab. It's, it's kind of cool that that's in here and it's, it's often uh, very underused because it means you don't have to deal with HDRI and, and bits and bobs and buy images from the store. You can just, you know, just can deal with this and get the set the mood even for indoor scenes, set the mood of your scene.
So we'll see how to change the temperature as well. And then, oh yeah, that's another thing I haven't actually talked about here. There is, in this image, there's no post work in here. So we'll notice later that the contrasts are a little bit harder, the saturation is a little bit increased, and the way I've dealt with this here is that I've added some tone mapping options. So again, that's another little trick that we can use so that we don't have to do things in Photoshop. It's just crazy. When are they going to stop? Do they say that midnight maybe, or is it going to is it going to go on for much longer? Oh, one more minute. Oh, okay, great. That's that's awesome. Hey, one of those things. <laughs> I'm going to go switch out of my iRay viewport here, and when I do that, then we don't see any effect of the sun anymore. So that's a bit of a shame. But hey, we're gonna we're gonna go and tweak that, bring that back in the final image. Let's bring in that uh, background set. And that is under Environments once it's installed. I've only got Urban Future 5 and 6 and Posto Pacifico installed, so very cool. Uh, double click on that, that's in the Smart Content tab. Under Environments, we get two versions here, Posto Pacifico, that's just the structure. And then we've got the preload version, and that's the one that I'm going to load here. And that's the one that comes with all the little knickknacks like flowers and bits and bobs here. There we go. That is it. That's the interior that we're not going to use. comes with a little balcony. And it comes, you know, it's kind of an outdoor little gazebo type thing. And I thought, you know, since it's a Platinum Club freebie, let's just use that. My first idea was to go through it and have the sunset somewhere here and have this whole structure kind of frame the thing. But then I thought, nah, boring. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do an outdoor shot. I'm gonna do it exactly like you saw it in the, uh, in the, in the thumbnail there. Uh, not entirely sure about. Um, about the focal length here but I'm gonna we're gonna get there we're just gonna go and, and put it into place just roughly just like that so we see a little bit of the indoor thing and we see most of the Sun will appear here and that's that's kind of cool to lock that in I'm gonna go over to my scene I'm gonna close my whole poster Pacifico thing and then I'm gonna make that thing unselectable that's this little arrow icon with a tick thing behind there you see that here if you go and untick that then you should be uh, then that is no longer clickable so I don't accidentally select that because I don't want to I don't want to accidentally select the chair or whatnot so you know one of those things and um, that's really all we need for now let's see if we can create a camera from up here I like to use the menu for that you also have these little icons here which I find often meaningless camera I can just about decipher but uh, I kind of use I'm kind of a menu guy so I'm gonna head over and create a new camera that'll give me a little dialog box and in here I can either apply the default settings which I believe creates the camera in the dead center of the scene that's sometimes good for lighting so that lights are created in the center so you can find them or you can copy the active viewport in which case that's the perspective view for us and that'll create a camera with the exact settings that I've just set up with my perspective view so same location same focal length and all that so I'm gonna go and do that hit accept and that creates a camera that looks all we see is this little X icon here through my perspective view but we're also still looking through the perspective view so let me go and switch over to camera one now and then that X will disappear so the advantage of that is is now that I can go and tweak my camera independently of the perspective view and so I could uh, fiddle with the focal length here I can make that a bit wider for example and then just uh, zoom in a bit more so I get I get a bit of a more dramatic shot here perhaps something like that I'm gonna do the final adjustments later and as soon as I switch back to the perspective view we've got this view and that means we can now go and swing around and uh, see where we want to place our character here before we do that let's switch over to the camera and switch that viewport back to iRay and just uh, get a bit of a look at what the scene is going to look like with that light so that we can put the sun which is of course a main character in our thing uh, right over here now the thing is we've post we've placed the sun the sun is happening in the east I guess this is where it where this is where the sun sets right sun sets in the east and goes up in the west is that how it works 
sets in the west okay sets in the west sorry about that so the sun that must be west so that must be east but our set preload it doesn't really care about that so it means that uh, we'd either now have to go and spin our camera around to see the sun which would be lame because that's not the shot we want so i'm going to go control z and put that back to the shot that i'd like to see uh, or we can spin the dome around so that the sun disk is more or less just like a, a disk that's uh, for better or worse drawn onto the sky dome so what we can do now is we can take the sky dome and rotate the sky dome and that will also move our sun over there let's see how to do that under render settings we've got the the um, uh, the dome thing so let's go and click on that and that'll have a dome orientation of x y and z so the y orientation is what we want to tweak so i'm going to go and just spin that around see if that's the correct direction i guess it isn't so there we go let's go and turn that there we go sun's coming into vision that's exciting i'm going to place it here so that we know where to tweak it and i'm going to show you something else if i were to use my camera now and move further into the whole thing into my whole set then you can see that although my camera is moving forward the sun isn't actually changing size so that is a little bit weird when you set the scene up but it's just something to be aware of if you rotate the scene around you can now see that the sun is moving with it because it's drawn onto the sky dome there but if you it doesn't change whoops it doesn't change size if you go closer to it you can never go to it like you can never go to uh, the end of the uh, the end of the dorms it's, it's not like um, uh, that Jim Carrey movie what was it again uh, not Wayne's World it's the other one the, where he was uh, Truman Show there we go that's the one <sighs> zero Kelvin oh excellent hello Brian how you doing yes I'd love to narrate your book let's let's talk a deal there that sounds that sounds great let's do that very cool so uh, here we go the um the sun should be a little bit larger in our scene brian and i had a little chat earlier so uh, he was asking me could i narrate his book and uh, i was thinking that's a, that's a great idea let's let's get let's do that it'll be on the on the sun tab and it'll be the sun disk scale so if we crank that value up we can now make a much larger sun in the sky and like I like that to be a prominent character here. So perhaps this uh, we can uh, we can go and head back to the dome and just uh, tweak the Y orientation a little bit. So if we if the sun is here, I'm thinking our character could be here, and the sun is here, so that we then you know, have everything in the in the scene there. To make this a little more dramatic, let's see if we can increase the sun disk intensity. That makes that brighter. And that's kind of a trade-off now that we can, in the, in the uh, haze setting under the sky tab, we can now add additional haze there. And that makes that, it leaves it large, but it makes it, uh, makes it slightly less glowy. So maybe, you know, maybe we want to do something like that. That looks like a nice little, nice little sun. Let's tweak the color of the sun as well. And um, that is happening also in the sun menu, I believe. Is that, is that correct? Um, there's a glow intensity we can try that see what happens there no nah, that's that's not what I'm looking for so I'm gonna go and reset that it was was it in intensity oh that's a that's a funny one here RGB unit conversion I don't know what that does but it looks like it uh, it kind of it it gives us a little bit of a different uh, value for the sky color here can you see that that's kind of cool so this is the value here rgb unit conversion i don't really know uh, what it is thank you so much rod how exciting thank you for your birthday present i love it that's very kind of you you're all very kind guys this is i, I really appreciate that so yes rgb unit conversion <laughs> that's not really the slider i was looking for i must i must be absolutely honest with you maybe i can find it in any of the other things so there was something that shifts the, oh there we go it's under the sky menu it's the blue red tint the blue red tint so if i crank that up the scene is going to be more orange it is so noisy in here oh it's going to get more blue so that's something I wanted to do, and I think that's that's the thing I wanted to uh, to add. There. But maybe both of these things together, that would be kind of a nice look, won't it? So maybe you know, this is the change it makes. Make it a little bit yellow. 
<laughs> Can you hear me down in France there? Oh man. It's such a shame. Why don't these guys coordinate this with that? No, sorry, Jay's doing his live stream on Friday and it's his birthday, so obviously you, you can't fly freaking fighter jets over Miami Beach. Oh no, sir, that's, I totally agree. Let's not do that. So maybe both of these items together here. That's very cool. Let's, let's drag the RGB unit conversion, if ever I find out what it is. Drag that down a bit and then we have this nice, nice orangey kind of tinge there. Very exciting stuff. So I think that's our scene set up. If we needed to move the sun slightly higher, slightly lower, we can always, we can, there's a bit of camera position that we can do that with. Or we can, of course, change the time of day. So make it a couple of minutes earlier, a couple of minutes later, that'll move the sun up or down. So very cool. Or there's the wide dome orientation. So that's cool. Now, <laughs> let's go and bring in a character. Uh, I'm going to switch that to the smooth shaded viewport now. And I'm going to grab a character here from my library under figures i'm just i'm usually picking the characters that appear at the top here so olympia was was the one i picked last time we can any preferences here victoria versus olympia do you prefer either of them i'm happy either way it's we're not going to see much of her it's just her back and uh, so that we can drape some some clothing on her any preferences let me know in the chat while i have a sip of coffee here and have a look at my return, which is, oh my God, that's like 10 minutes behind. How much latency is there in YouTube? Rod says Olympia. Anybody else for Olympia? What do you think, Julia? Yeah. Olympia? Julia likes Olympia. Let's go Olympia. Okay, there we go. See, on Mixer, we would have made a decision between 10 people in an instant. And on YouTube, it takes like five hours. It's terrible. I hate this latency. Thank you, Alien. Aliens for Olympia. Christina, Dream Lab. Uh, Julia, everyone's for Olympia. Olympia it is, okay. Double click, Miss Olympia, number eight. There have been so many iterations of you before you. Glad we meet number eight. I'm gonna move her forward and kind of, I'm gonna switch this over to my perspective view. In fact, my aux viewport here, that's the one that isn't, oops, <laughs> that's the one that isn't coming up at the moment. I'm gonna leave the aux viewport on camera one so that i get a bit of a uh, look at how the overall composition looks here while i'm fiddling around in the perspective view so i'm going to go and uh, should really move that scene tab elsewhere <laughs> i'm going to go and turn her around it doesn't have to be precise precisely 90 degrees but you know something like that and i'm thinking she's going to stand here somewhat yeah i think that's that's kind of what i want um, admiring the sunset, maybe slightly further over to the left. I'm going to give her a pose from the from the uh, Danny and Marfonos collection, White Spring collection, and I'm going to do that uh, because that's not supported from the Smart Content tab. That's content from Renderosity that doesn't live in the Smart Content tab, so that lives in the Content Library tab, and uh, that's where I'm going to go and find that and that is under if you've never looked into this the difference between these two things by the way is that this smart content tab here has a database entry attached with each product so it knows that olympia 8 is part of the genesis 8 series and that technically only genesis 8 clothing comes with that so if we were to select her and i now go into the wardrobe tab here for example i would only uh, if this little icon down here is selected, by the way, filter by context, then I can see that uh, I can only show content that now goes with Olympia 8 from this Genesis Series 8 stuff. So if I wanted to fit anything Genesis 3 onto my figure, I'd have to deselect that box so that Das Studio in the smart content shows me everything. And some people find that really helpful. Some people get really annoyed by that. And uh, they like to work with the content library tab, which is literally just a file browser. That's the difference between it. Smart content takes into consideration database entries, or let's just say additional data, whereas the content library is a pure file browser. And that's where I'm going to go looking now. I'm going to look in my um, poser formats. Under Renderosity, there is a... F no, actually, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It is under the Dash Studio Formats tab in my uh, Renderosity folder. And here I can find people. Here I can find Genesis 8 female. And here I can find poses. And there is the vendor, DM, Danny at Marfono. And here's the White Spring Collection. And that's the actual product. 
the way I've set it up is the actual files that I can now apply are showing up at the bottom. So I'm going to finalize pose or just look in the white spring collection four and find an even nicer pose. Something like that. It doesn't have to be something, something like that. That should be cool. Let's do that. Let's let's click that pose. So with Olympia selected, I'll double click that. I may get a little warning here that the pose isn't really made for Olympia and that the limits that are on the figure will be exceeded. That's just fine. I'm going to say turn limits off. So limits in uh, on characters in Dash Studio are things that uh, you can't you can't bend your arm beyond a certain range. And depending on the figure, some figures can move their arms further than other so any any kind of joint it does that and if you leave limits on then sometimes the arm can only be bent to about here or it can't be bent backwards but if you switch limits off then you can totally override that and i suppose we have to do that here so um with all that out of the way and with miss olympia still selected let's put some clothes on her and that is also on the content library tab now because that's also content that i'm going to apply from Renderosity, which is in fact Biscuits and Golden's wonderful summer spirit outfit. You're going to love it. It's great. It's a deforce capable outfit. So we're going to do a little bit of deforcing here too. And that can be found uh, much like before under the Genesis 8 female. Under people, Genesis 8 female, that's where you find clothing. There's a clothing folder here. And that's where you find the vendors usually. So Golden Biscuits is the vendor in my case. In it, we'll find the outfit which is the summer spirit outfit i know this sounds terribly terribly complicated but you get used to this as you work more with that studio and the content library tab so when you click on this you can find the outfits here so that's the skirt and the top we're going to go and put both of these on just make sure the character is still selected if anything else is selected those things won't auto fit properly so go and apply that top apply the skirt and that is kind of cool. Well, I can see now that I have, luckily I'm still in the perspective view. I can see that her hand is going through the outfit a little bit. So if I'm gonna go and do any deforce magic with that, I'm gonna have to make sure that arm is not in her and I'm gonna have to adjust that. Otherwise I'm risking that the dress or the skirt is gonna explode in a moment. Even without defaults, it's kind of falling very well already. So great work there. Thank you, Biscuits. And thank you for letting me use this for this demonstration. I'm, I really appreciate that. Uh, yes, Olympia. I'm just, I'm just kind of browsing through the, through the long gone chat. Uh, normal TV. The, yeah, Olympia is, uh, is kind of a heavy set character. And she was introduced uh, about five years ago, I think, um, with the Genesis 2 range. If I don't, if I remember correctly, yeah, I think that was Genesis 2. That's, that's seen the first iteration of Olympia. And she's kind of the Greek goddess type figure. That was her. Shall we do deforce first? What do you think? Shall we, shall we get that out of the way so that we get the character set up properly before we put hair on it? Let's do that. Let's do a bit of deforce magic. Oh, okay. Who said that? Oh, Rod. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's go and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select her arm uh, somewhere left shoulder bend left shoulder bend should work it's not gonna it's not gonna be great but yeah that's that's exactly that's exactly what I want to do I just want to make sure I can bend the arm back later so this is just you know uh, just bending the arm out I'm going to bring it back later but I just want to make sure it doesn't intersect with the geometry before I start off the uh, the the deforce simulation so very important now with olympia selected or deselected doesn't really matter let's watch the skirt and what it does so this is now happening in my case on the simulation settings tab and i've got those uh, set up here on the right hand side already uh, there's several things that we can go through but in our case all we really need to do is make sure the since it's already a, a conformed outfit somebody's sending me lots of birthday text messages i'm just gonna, it's my mom that's hi mom in case you're watching hello i'm just going to put you on silent and read your messages once the stream is over <laughs> there we go um uh, all you need to do really i think is select the the clothing item which is the summer spirit skirt 
and then we click the big blue simulate button and that should I say should because I'm not entirely sure if it will simulate everything correctly <laughs> why don't I go and save my scene before before we do that so let's go and save that scene as um, Posto Pacifico cast there not so bad let's go and hit that big blue button Bing. and we'll see what happens if you've just installed that studio you often get a message that says the whatever for your card hasn't been compiled kernels whatnot and you just say okay it takes a little while longer and the computer goes through something else to I don't know, compile kernels or something but uh, uh, really um, once you click it the computer now simulates between the a pose and the final post that we've set there and uh, that is just the necessary iteration so that from the a pose the non-draped and non-post skirt with the non-draped figure can be animated frame by frame into the final position and only then will you receive accurate results of how clothing drapes so every clothing engine works like that marvelous designer works like that i believe blender has a clothing draping plugin as well um so there we go uh, but uh, yeah deforce works just like that and um that is it so now we have a now we have a draped draped skirt it looks a little bit frazzled now but that's only because there's a transparency map applied to it um, and if we go ahead and uh, look at camera one which is now it's kind of too far away perhaps i'm going to zoom in a little bit there that's by uh, we can do that by uh, sorry zoom out and dolly in like that yeah well yeah, we're just gonna go I'm not entirely sure about the focal length thing yet so I'm gonna I'm gonna go and play around with that until I've got it the way I want it so <laughs> for now let's just have a look at the at the character and let's have let's have her let's have a render and see what that looks like oh there's one other thing that I must remember to switch off and that's because I'm looking through my camera now having ruined my perfectly acceptable shot there sadly I still I believe I still have the um, headlamp feature on so I'm gonna go and switch that off uh, briefly just in case it is on it's on auto so I like to switch that off on the camera so I don't get interfering light from the headlamp feature on the camera and one other thing that I've forgotten is of course to bend the arm back because that looks a little bit unnatural now so I'm gonna go, go bend that arm back and then we should be okay I just wanted to show that the skirt actually looks looks fine here and we're going to do a bit of color correction we're also going to worry about the ground the ground plane is showing in the background so we're going to make sure that doesn't happen anymore in a moment okay arm next followed by hair of course in the perspective view i still have the the um what's it called the preview lights on you can toggle those on a camera as well so right now control l won't do anything because in the perspective view the preview lights are always on but if i switch it to the camera um, and switch control l off like this then i don't see anything so if i wanted to see something control l will put me right back there while the headlamp feature is still off so very very good point there uh, let's go back to the perspective view and do the arm thing I think that was the left shoulder bend yeah perfect so I'm gonna go and put that so that it just doesn't intersect with the figure that's actually that's actually perfect it's very close to the original pose and we won't see anything on the front so even if her fingers are now kind of intersecting with the face we don't have to worry about that we're not we're not gonna see that so you know save yourself a lot of work Do you know the great thing is that uh, that the planes have stopped. That is really nice. I'm, I'm, I feel so chilled out. Let's start the stream again. Hey, how are you doing, everyone? It's my birthday today. Just joking. No, let's keep going. So uh, let's see how what we can do about here. So um, we can select Olympia's head, 
and then click that little square icon and that brings the head up right where we want it and it also makes it possible for us to rotate around the figure and uh, sticking in the biscuit spirit i'm going to use one of biscuit's hair products which is bow hair you got to check this out i'm going to show you some of the parameters but you have to check this out this is phenomenal stuff uh, Biscuits is so talented when it comes to making hair. The amount of effort she puts into this absolutely mind-blowing. Let me show you how it works and how to apply Biscuits hair on Genesis characters and in fact many other characters. So uh, with the head selected you go back into your renderosity content and in this case we're not looking under people here. We're looking under uh, the, we're not even looking under the Dust Studio formats. In fact, we're going to look under the poser formats because the geometry is stored there. And this is one thing that, that always makes me laugh. I always make this mistake that I'm thinking, hey, I'm looking for hair. So let's go into the hair folder. Let's go into biscuits. Let's go into bow hair. And I see hair is in the prop folder. That's very cool because I always make that mistake. I always go there. So, you know, thank you, biscuits, for doing that. You're not looking in the hair folder at all. You're looking in the props folder under biscuits and then you'll see the hair products here bow hair in my case and uh, i've got a couple of things here i've got the hair and i've also got the hair cap so it is recommended to load the hair cap first and then apply the hair you apply the hair cap to the head and you apply the hair to the actual figure and then it kind of finds its way there the purpose of the uh, cap is that because the hair has got so many transparent parts you don't really want to see the character's skin on the head you want there to be something in between that is the same color as the hair so that's why if you ever you come across hair caps that's the purpose of hair caps so that you don't see naked skin and then you have i don't know brunette hair that's always that doesn't look nice in here we see that the hair cap isn't quite fitting and that's because the hair cap is just a simple prop and it knows its way onto the head but it doesn't quite understand what character we're actually fitting it to and that is why once we select the hair cap uh, we can either try that from here yeah we can do that right click and then it brings you up whatever is selectable in this position so you can say uh, cap v4 default you select that in the scene tab you can see that this is correctly selected it's parented to the head just so that you know where that is uh, with that selected you head over to the parameters tab here and then on the morph tab you've got several fitting morphs that means the the i believe it's the is the crown is that what you call the top of your head that's the crown isn't it yeah so the crown the fit of the crown can now be adjusted to several characters so in here we've got the genesis 2 female fit we've got the genesis 3 and genesis 8 female fit we've got fitting for dawn from hive wires dawn pauline that's the new poser 11 figure pe that's project evolution that is uh, aerogenesis this new figure available from several marketplaces there and we're using a genesis 8 character so we're going to use this slider and watch what happens to the hair cap it of course morphs itself to the head now each head is differently shaped so that's why there's tolerances you don't have to crank this up to 100 percent not necessary you can just do it so that you don't see any skin poking through here can you see that we've got a bit of poke through here so just leave it so that we've got it up to about here and that'll be enough so with that out of the way, you can do the several other morph offsets here if you, in case you need them or if you want to fit this to a figure that isn't built into the fitting morphs. You can probably do a good job just adjusting this with these little sliders here. Thank you, Julia. That's very helpful. Thanks. Julia's going to post the links of the products that we're using um, in this demo into the chat. Now, to fit the hair, I've found that if you just select the... A root figure here in our case Victoria Victoria Olympia 8 uh, that'll be enough for the hair to be fitted properly so uh, once again to do that I'm gonna head over to the content library tab again and now I'm gonna go and fit the bow hair prop so uh, double click that that takes a while because hair biscuits hair is, is, is very uh, detailed and you'll see in a moment why and how and now we can see in the scene tab the hair doesn't seem to be in the scene but that is because it's parented itself to the head where it actually where it belongs see if we can find it there we go under the head we now have the uh, 
cap and we've got the bore hair. So it's kind of found its way there. If you want to make any adjustments, that's where you'll find it. But the easiest is probably to just hover over the hair should you need to select it and then just go right click and select bow hair. And once you've done that in the parameters tab, we now have a long list of morphs. So that's the general, that's like the rotation and, and uh, scale and all that. So don't touch that. Display, you also don't need to worry about that. But then come the morphs. So we've got the fits, offsets, moves, styles. And do you know how much work has gone into making that product? It's, it's just, I see thousands of sliders. They all do something different. And th there's just so much work to make each of these sliders. And not only is it... A, Making the slider isn't the problem, it's making the adjustment in the actual geometry and then creating a morph from that, that's the issue. So in our case, we've got, um, we've got uh, thin and thick and high and cute. So, you know, let's play around with these and see how that changes the hair figure. So I believe um, cute is kind of nice, it does this. Chunky is kind of cool. It literally turns these things into, into completely different hair props. I absolutely love it. You can use them in combination or just by itself. Iron is funky. That's like a straight hair thing. It's just, you know, this is basically two different hair props. Not just two, like like 12 or 100. Don't know how many combinations you can you can make with this. But, you know, play around with it. It's um, it's It's very cool swing them out and this is just the the style so this is not for movement movement is uh, is separate movement is here in the moves tab so uh, we don't see the front of it but we can move the back you know as if there's a little waft of wind here gust of wind uh, to either side we can do that in the front as well and we can do the sides too so you know it's, this is just emulating whatever your uh, whatever your scene may need here it's a very very exciting stuff so I think I'm going to go and uh, and make that a little bit longer. See if I can find something long. What's jazzy? The jazzy is a little bit more curly here. I'm sure there's a there's a there's a there's a long offset. Oh, one thing I totally forgot. Yes, under fits, that's that's another that's important here. <laughs> under fits, you probably want to make sure you fit the hair prop to Genesis 8. We don't see this here now, but if we were to look at this in Ira, we may see the top of her crown popping through. So just make sure you fit that up. Once again, it doesn't have to be 100% just until you're kind of happy that nothing is poking through there. I think I'm going to make it 100%. We're not seeing much of her anyway. I think uh, slightly longer, that's what I like. And I would like um, long, there we go. Uh -huh. Crazy long. And I'd like for the hair to just move a little bit to the side at the back. You can, as you can imagine, you can spend absolutely ages to adjust thousands of sliders here. So I'm gonna leave it here and, uh, will I leave it here? like that I think that's I think that's cool something like that maybe there's a little waft that's that's waving there is that cool are we happy with that I'm gonna go with that I'm gonna go with this yeah I think I'm gonna go with this maybe to the other side what do you think the other side I think other side is nicer let's do that Yes, Julia's had some, she has a MacBook Air from 2011 and it's really playing up with uh, with keyboard movements. I don't know what's what's going on there. Hardware wizard, that hardware wizard that I am, I could not figure it out. So there we go. We're not, one final thing about the hair and then I stopped going on about the hair. I'm sorry, but it's one of those things. So uh, if you do a final render with the hair, with the hair selected here, then um, Biscuits recommends that you apply a subdivision surface modifier to this. We're not going to do it. It'll increase the geometry and it will make the hair in your render look more realistic. So I'm not going to do it, but uh, you'll see that it's a, it's a big improvement on how the hair looks in your final render. I'm just going to show you where that is. Uh, that is good for hair. Often hair comes pre-subdivided, but it becomes massive, so it's much easier to do it afterwards. Um, same goes for any type of geometry. So you can do that under with the hair selected, it's very important. 
I am so hairy, I know, it's crazy stuff. With the hair selected, you can go under Edit, and this is one of those Dash Studio things, so it's not a button, subdivide, it's kind of, it's, it is a button, but it's kind of hidden there somewhere. So you have to go over Edit, Object, or Figure, either will work fine. Object is cool. Geometry, Convert to Sub-D. You can, you can find the same thing under Figure, Geometry, Convert to Sub-D. It's kind of, they, they do the same thing, a figure and an object, we're not going to go into that, but they're they're kind of, they're almost the same. They're almost the same in Dash Studio. So there we go. That's the final thing that you should do if you're using this in a close-up or medium shot render. We're not going to do that. We're just going to see this from from the back, so it's all good. Let's see now what we've got so far in our camera, and then maybe you know adjust adjust things to where they should what what they should be what they should be like uh, on my cameras tab here under camera i've got a focal length of 34 right now i think that's that's cool i like to stick with with the kind of fo photographic lenses that i know from from the real world so i, I like you know, 38 is something that that i like um what do you think shall we put a little bit of this stuff in the front or not shall we focus more on the character so remember the sun is going to be whoops sorry the sun is going to be here and then we're going to have a little bit of a light shining in from here. And I don't know how I did it, but I think in my in my previous shot, I've got some, I've had some, like a little bit of the of the railing in here. Oh yeah, probably by, by zooming in, that's how I did it. Isn't it? Yeah, so I'm, let's let's shoot with an 80 millimeter lens. Let's do that. I think so too, Dreamlabs. I think that's exactly what we're going to do. A little bit of a little bit of something in the front, and let's see where our sun is. Switch this over to the eye ray viewport, and also save my scene just in case my computer crashes. Not that it has done that a lot in the past, but you know, it's. I'm always, I'm. I like I like a stable system. <laughs> so let's have a look. Thanks, Rod. That's exactly what we're gonna what we're gonna worry about next, because it'll look a little flat, I think, when it's rendered, without emphasizing that there's something else in the scene. With point lights, I'm gonna explain that in an upcoming video how to place point lights and what uh, how to deal with these parametric lights here. Uh, but in essence, you can really go to town with that and emphasize little bits. So in our scene, we can probably put a point light here and here and do all kinds of other interesting things just so that uh, these things don't look so flat and blend uh, into one another so we can we can go to town there and you know we, we might depending on depending on the time as they say it's my party i cry if i want to <laughs> there we go so i think uh, let's 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 do something like this and i think that's a good that's a good starting point for us mm. yeah something like that something like that just to lock the camera in <laughs> poor johnny hey so um let's take care of the sun it's supposed to be our main, one of our main characters and needs to be here. So I need to rotate that dome a little bit. Uh, that's under render settings, under dome. And that's the dome Y rotation. Let me bring that over here. There we go. She's looking at the sun set. <laughs> I didn't have the sun that big, but uh, I think it kind of, that's, that's kind of cool. It's almost like, you know, she's thinking, hmm, what's happening here? Is it the end of the world? Could well be. So... That's, that's one thing. I, I kind of like that. That's cool. Uh, just moving that a little bit further down. Since we've got such a, law, such a large sun there. Yeah, I think I like that. We do depth of field at the very end, I think. Uh, for now, let me look at the horizon. 
that's another glaring issue here that the that the plane the ground plane is in the way and it's just you know it's just it's a good scene but the ground plane has to go doesn't it and i haven't found a way to delete it or to to remove it there may well be a setting if you know then uh, please let me know if there's maybe just a tick box that says render ground plane on or off there may well be under environment in fact let's just have a look if we can search for it that'll be under ground ground texture scale draw the ground hey, hey awesome look at that <laughs> by thinking out loud i found the button so if we switch that off the ground plane is still there so that's not really helpful is it but thanks das that's not really it's not what we want to do so um luckily I've, i know a way around it and that is by just blurring it so that this this thing that is obviously off on 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 off switchable is that a, is that a word if, if that is the case we can just um, head over to one of these amazing settings here if i can find where that is and we can blur the ground right out uh, of course i don't remember the exact thing off the ground you'd think it's underground ground shadow intensity texture scale Biscuits, I think uh, if ever you find the time, we would love to see how you make your hair props. There, there are some uh, videos on Biscuits' channel on how how she creates some of the morphs, and you use ZBrush as well, right? Uh, Cinema 4D and ZBrush, and uh, I would love to see how you do how you how you create these things. I'm just looking through all the sliders until I found the one that was working really well for me which I can't remember. It's, it's something to do with blur the ground. Uh, perhaps I'll just go and search for blur in a moment. Ground position mode, well, that's another interesting thing. I'm pretty sure I've used the, I've used something along the lines of blur something or other. But it looks like Oh, there we go. Horizon blur. That's the one. Ha! Huh. See, my loud thinking, my thinking out loud has come into play again. SS horizon blur. So that's under sun and sky. Okay, good. Let me see if I can find that myself here. Sky. There we go. Horizon blur and horizon height. Those are the parameters I was looking for. So great. Okay, cool. So it's under under the sky. Very cool. So the height that does this. High and lower that isn't what we're looking for unless we're looking into you know end of world type scenario that's that's not it's also it's it's it's, it's got a certain kind of charm to it but it's kind of not the look i'm going for so alt click on this will bring that back but horizon blur that's the one i was looking for so if we do that then the horizon kind of blurs and we can see a little bit of a shadowy uh gap here that's that's more what i want because perhaps that's a city in the background that's that, you know that's that's better maybe now we can add a little bit of uh, the horizon height to no actually no I, I don't like the horizon height effect at all so we're going to go back there so under environment dome sun and sky sky we find horizon blur and that's how we get rid of that ugly grayness if you ever need to use that Yeah, exactly. The end of world charm there. Oh my God, Christina, you worked for Maxon. How exciting! We all have an exciting history here. Don't we this is. I gotta say, this is. It's it's extremely cool spending birthday together with you. That's that's really nice. One of the best birthdays I've ever had. I must say. So thanks, thanks guys for hanging out with me. I had planned a double bill. I think I'm a little bit too tired for that. I was gonna unwrap one of my birthday presents, which was of course maya 2019 that's another thing that that came like david put it came crashing through the window how exciting is that i've been uh, one of my viewers daryl i don't know if you're watching daryl if you are hello daryl thank you for putting me on that track daryl asked me if i could make a tutorial for him to move das characters to maya and back and i said ah, i can't afford maya sorry it's too expensive and he says yeah i can see that he says i'm using the student edition and we had a little chat and he said maybe you can make a case that you have an education channel and perhaps uh, autodesk will give you a free copy and they did so that's exciting that's that is a birthday present so thank you autodesk in case you're watching 
as if uh, that is very exciting so you know I'm gonna play around with that and I've not had a chance to install it so one of my ideas was after this which is already getting a little bit longer than, than I thought it was going to be so I thought um, maybe I can I can install it together with you and those of you who, who know uh, Maya could give me a few tips or maybe we'll leave that for another day and we'll finish our scene off here but yes that's you know that's just so much for the birthday spirit I, I, that's that's just so cool so let's go and uh, drop a little point light into this area here and we're doing that so that there's a little bit of separation once we're on the point light trail maybe we can have a look what a point light here and maybe here or perhaps on the outside here would do as well let's see let's see how it works absolutely alien and dream lab perhaps there's a Maya tutorial incoming that's what I said to Daryl that's one of the first things I'm going to try and do uh, make make that that interaction between Maya and Das Studio go to town there Das have actually got a lot of stuff on their website uh, for Maya so Maya ready as FBX files but somebody made them and they're charging 100 bucks for them Ooh, I'm thinking ay caramba let me switch out of the iray view and into the texture shaded view again and i'll go and create a new point light here i'm going to explain more about point lights and the difference between the point light and the linear point light in one of my upcoming videos here for iray there is none so don't worry about it you can either use a point light or a linear point light there's no difference for iray this is for, for 3d light so we're going to just use a regular point light here and that'll come in just with these settings here. This time, I'm gonna go and apply the uh, default settings, and that'll make the light come into the middle of the scene. So there it is, that's right there. And I can see if I can guide it over here. Let me switch over to my perspective view and uh, frame up on that, on that point light. And we don't really want it in vision we just want it somewhere inside so it's if we're going to emulate the look as if there's some i don't know light in here it could be a lantern could be could be anything sometimes a little bit difficult to catch these little triangles here and if we switch that back to camera yeah it's not in vision that's cool we get a little bit of a preview here the opengl preview so you can see if i switch this off then I was hoping we can get a little preview, but I guess we don't. So there we go. If I switch back into the iRay viewport, we'll probably see absolutely no effect because the default parameters for parametric lights are usually set very, very low. So much lower than I'm sure there's some reason behind it. But look, I, I don't actually see my light in action here. It is, it is on for sure, but it's just not bright enough. So we need to brighten that up a little bit. And we do that under the parameters tab here. That's where we find the regular transform options under general. So we can close that down. We've got display as well. We don't need to worry about that, but we've got the light tab. And we have this, this in, in lights, just parametric lights. There's two modes, photometric and non-photometric. Non-photometric is kind of a, you know, easy mode if you like. If you switch that off, then all you have is an intensity slider and the color. But I'm going to switch that on because I'd like to expand the range of my intensity slider. I'm going to leave that at 100%. There's, there's various ways around it. But uh, I'm going to head over to Photometrics and I'm going to increase the luminous flux in Lumen. That's also that's a cool value here. That's in, in, in essence, how much light is emitted from the, from the light source. So 1500 isn't a lot. I'm going to start this off with 20,000 and we'll see if that has an effect. I can just about see light creeping in here now. Still not much. So perhaps I'm gonna add a zero here, make that 200,000. There we go. Now we can see a bit of light here. That's cool, but it really took that to, to make that, to turn that into something like a, like a usable thing. I'm thinking that perhaps the light is a little bit too hi i'm gonna just i'm gonna move that down a little bit that's just a y translation i'm eyeballing it here see if it works yeah i think i like that dramatic effect that we can see a little bit of the ground here as well that's that's nice 
Hello Zinsim, how are you doing? Thank you for dropping by. We're just building this nice little nice little sunset scene here. So uh, I like the look of that, but what I found is that it needs a little bit of sprucing up with a tiny bit of color. So I'm thinking that uh, we've got we've got a couple of options here. And once again, under filter metrics, we can now change the light temperature. So 6,500 is kind of daylight. Uh, say we can, let's try 4,000 and that'll make it a little bit yellow, a little bit warmer. So that's as if it's indoor light and that'll work. But I think I'm in for something more dramatic. So once again, I'll reset that and I'll, I'll head over to the top light thing here and I'm going to just change the color of the light. Any preference for color? Anybody? I've uh, I've looked at purple before, but we can also try blue maybe. Let's try blue. Something not too saturated. Nuclear peach. Is that a color, David? Let's try that. Nuclear peach. That could be... Let's, let's try this. Nuclear peach. <laughs> blue. You yearn for blue? Okay, we'll, we'll do blue. Yeah, I think I like I like something as a as a contrast to all the orangey stuff here. So uh, uh, I think I liked uh, something like maybe dark purple. See what that looks like. Per perhaps a little bit much. What do you think? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Let's make this a bit bluer. I do just for the for the record. I, I've oh my god, I'm so sorry. You didn't even see the the effects that I've brought up here. So <laughs> just uh, switch the camera there. I do hate the Windows color picker. That's that's all I wanted to say really on that subject. It's just, you know, Windows color picker is just not for me. Something like that, perhaps. A uh, little darker, maybe. Yeah, something like that. That is a good name, isn't it? Nuclear Peach. Is that cool? Or is that a little bit over the top? That purple. Let me know. We can we can change it. It's no problem at all. But I think if we. It's scary. Julia says it's scary. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try alien green. Disco at sunset. Yes. Woo woo. Green. What is green like? Not bad. As if there's something brewing in there. I don't know. You guys decide. Maybe I'm gonna. Blue, Julia says blue as well. Okay, so Dreamlab and Julia, you're both for blue. I just can't find the right type of blue here. That's not bad. I think that's a that's a good idea. It's kind of a purplish blue. Let's do that. That's that's nice. That's like the that's like a juxtaposition of the of the sunset, like at ninety degrees coming from the inside with the you know. That's cool, isn't it? Great. As if you can sell it, it's awesome. So okay, uh, that's that's good. We're we're nearly we're nearly there. We're nearly there. The only other thing I'd like to do is on my monitor here. This scene looks a little. Oh yeah, here, David. By the way, this is what the folks of who don't have three monitors and three graphics cards usually do. If they want to see something bigger, you can just click on these. The, on these tabs here and then they close and they close everything else with it so if I wanted to show you this slightly larger I can totally do that like now and then you can just close these these panes down so those those poor folks that <laughs> that don't have multiple monitors David has three which is cool I've seen his setup it's mind-blowing it's absolutely we should all have a setup like that three monitors it's, it would be so cool I never would I never would so one thing I want to change here is the fact that this hasn't got enough contrast. I mean, I've come using one of the cheapest monitors on the planet, uh, so it doesn't have the good contrast ratio that my Mac monitor has. So if I look at this on the Mac monitor, it's probably going to look OK. But on the Acer monitor here, it just looks a little bit washed out. And I think I'd like to increase the saturation as well. Usually what I do is I'd render this image out and then go do all that in Photoshop because it's just a few clicks away but if I already know at a render stage that these things are flawed then I can dial a few little sliders here and then you know maybe come up with a with a result that's closer to what I want to achieve without doing any post-production so let me show you where that is this is the beautiful world of tone mapping and we can find that also on the render settings tab 
and that is not under environment here that is under tone mapping and that's that's often neglected here so tone mapping is is one of those difficult to explain uh, things you can it, it almost sounds like we're controlling a camera but we're not really we're controlling something that is akin to the post-production step that is inherent in every electronic camera so usually what happens is you've got the CMOS sensor or the CCD or whatever that's the light sensitive element and it it reads out whatever light comes in so hopefully a, a sharp picture or sharp picture data shall I say and whatever comes out of that isn't actually a picture it has to go through a processing step to turn it into a picture because technically it's just raw data that comes out of that thing and that is what tone mapping is all about it applies values so that we get to see a beautiful picture which is also the reason why you can develop raw image data in Photoshop or do post-production that then results in something like a JPEG image. So raw image data isn't actually a handsome looking image. It's more like a very flat mishmash of stuff. And that's exactly how the render engine works. So it renders raw data and tone mapping is then applied. And then we see the result that we see on the screen. But without it, if I were to switch this off, and there's a big button here that switches the tone mapping thing off, we're in for a bit of a surprise because this is the uninterpreted data, if I remember this correctly. And you know, that that just isn't isn't anything we can, we can really live with. So we really have to switch on tone mapping to do that. Other render engines don't combine these steps. So Lux Render, for example, has the, the ability to do tone mapping and the rendering separately from one another. So if you change your mind about the tone mapping settings, you don't necessarily have to re-render the image. You just have to reapply the tone mapping to the rendered data that comes out of the render engine. Very clever. That uh, saves some, some time sometimes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the contrast and the saturation a little bit. <laughs> that would be nice, yes. <laughs> Christina, that would be very nice. And uh, I'm going to, there's, there's many things here, we're not going to go through all of them, but uh, I'm going to go and uh, mess with the gamma. It's set to 2.2, but I'm going to bring that down. So bringing that up makes the contrast more soft like this, and I want to have the opposite effect. So I'm going to bring it under 2.2. So maybe I'll try 1.8 ish, something like that. And that makes that contrast a little bit harsher. Uh, it's perhaps a little bit too harsh, don't know. 1.8, I think I'm going to try 1.8. And um, uh, I can also mess with the saturation a little bit. I think I'm going to increase the saturation because the color is really everything. I don't want to overdo it. So perhaps, uh, perhaps, 1.05 is, is maybe all we need. We just need a little bit, a little extra here. And one other thing I'm going to apply is a bit of vignetting here. And that's the that's the, the kind of vignetting in the edges. It kind of emulates a camera. And uh, that's just, you know, that's personal taste. We don't want to totally do the Instagram image here. So, I mean, even though you can, it's kind of, you can do as much vignetting as you, as you like. But, uh, you know, as I said, overdoing it is always is always the tragedy if we make it if we make it subtle enough it's just it's just that extra bit of additional realism there so maybe five let's do five let's do five for now and uh, that's kind of my color correction done one last thing i want to do is apply a little bit of depth of field so that we don't have everything rendered in focus. I think that makes such a difference. It's just such little work to add a little bit of depth of field and just to, to add that, that hint of, hey, this isn't all drawn in focus. It's, it's, it's very easy to do. And uh, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna go and uh, close that tab, that pane down, open this here on the cameras tab. Uh, I'm already on the cameras tab, that's cool. So all I wanna do is switch depth of field on. And as soon as I do that, I get additional settings in the scene. So once you switch it on, the focal distance is gonna be important. And in order for us to see where my focal distance actually lies, it looks like it's it's fine already. So it's not actually it's not actually bad. Blender has this awesome feature that you that you basically with an eyedropper, you just drop it on the object that you'd like to be in focus and, and Blender says, Excellent, thanks, that's it. Uh, with DAS, we're not so lucky. I think there's maybe a, a script, but I've, I've, I haven't found it in, in a while. Let me go out 
of the IRA viewport, go to the top view and make sure I can see both my character and the camera. So shift select those and then hit that little square icon here to frame both of these things up. So now I can see my camera here and my character is over here. And notice these white lines in the camera here. They denote the focal distance. And so if I move that over, that's the focal distance slider right here. Watch what happens to these lines. So we've got one thing is kind of the, the focal plane here, which is which is this that doesn't change. But these two lines, they're important because anything in between those lines, if I change the focal distance, will be in focus. So my character needs to be in those two lines. If, if that is set up to something like that further away uh, or further away this way, then that's not going to work. So make sure my character appears in between these two lines here. And then I can use the f-stop value to make the distance between those lines slightly narrower or wider. So this is all based on real camera physics. So if you shoot with a longer um, focal length, then you'll have a shallower depth of field. And if you shoot with a wider lens, like you know anything below 50, then you'll have a much shallower depth of field. And in order to create the same effect at a narrower, at a, sorry, at a shorter lens, you have to, sometimes it just doesn't work out. So um, keep that in mind, that it has to kind of be founded in reality, what we're doing here, otherwise it's not gonna work. But in my case, I think it's just gonna work fine. We're just gonna uh, decrease the f-stop size a little bit. So it defaults to f22, which is kind of, you know, a medium aperture. But if we open our iris up, then we get a shallower depth of field. And if we do that, then you can see that those two lines, they, uh, they come closer together. So that means anything, once again, anything in between those lines will be rendered in focus. Anything out of them will be rendered out of focus. So now technically we have more outside those lines and hence we get a shallower depth of field. So I think this is something to, to play with. I'm going to uh, now switch the focal distance so that these two lines encapsulate my character again. And I'm just going to go and do a little test render. Oh, did you? Excellent. I like it, David. You can see the final effect only with the iRay uh, viewport switched on, of course. And then we'll see if that was too much in which case we're just going to bring down the or bring down the the f-stop range there. Yeah, you see this is it's it is working but it's it's doing it so well that this is just I can't even make all this stuff out. So it's I've I've overdone it here. My focal distance is set correctly, but my f-stop value needs to come down a little. Let's try let's try 16 instead. Yeah, I can I can see that's kind of that's that's better here. I like the idea. Probably 22 was probably bang on the money. No, it wasn't actually. We need to have something, uh, 32 perhaps. I see, I, I wouldn't, yeah, 32, somewhere between 22 and 32. That is, that's what I like, just to give it that hint there. I think perhaps I'm going to, maybe I'm going to go with 22. Maybe I'm going to go with 22, just so that we see the effect a little bit more pronounced in the stream, I think. A heat effect, um, what do you mean in, in regards to like like rising rising steam or uh, distortions, that sort of thing. Is that what you mean, Zinsim? It's a good name, actually, Zinsim. I like that. <laughs> yes, that's right. Ac absolutely, yeah, exactly. Like tilt-shift photography. Uh, not that I know of, Zinsim. I don't think there is a way to do that in Das Studio. There is something, I've covered that a couple of streams ago, how to create rising stream and use that as an overlay so that is something you can do in both in post-production as well as DAS Studio. So in my last live stream, I added a fog plane to an outdoor scene and that did the trick. So that just added that little bit of atmospheric stuff. We could probably do that here. That's uh, That would probably just enhance that realism a little bit. Um, uh, but yeah, watch that stream from, from last week and uh, it's called something about fog planes. Julia, if you dig it out, you can... <laughs> Julia is so on the case. Oh my God, it's like unbelievable. I think it and she does it. It's crazy. 15 years of marriage, that's what that does to you. Very cool. Um, yes, and uh, if, you, um, if you watch that and you need 
the, if you want that kind of fog plane, the asset that I'm using, uh, sign up to be a Patreon of mine. Uh, then you get access to the assets and you can play around with them. It's very cool. So I'm, I'm thinking we're kind of done with the image. I would like to try one thing out and that is add another couple of point lights, maybe one here, maybe one on the outside, just so that we get a little bit of more separation between these objects here. So they're, currently they kind of look like they're, they're in there, but, but they're not really popping out. So I'm going to try adding a point light somewhere here and somewhere here, just as a, as a test. It doesn't have to be, it'll be just the default light um, that they come with. And then we just play with the intensity slider. It should be like, you know, like five or 10 minutes and then we should be done here. I think she is incredible, isn't she? I think just so that I know what is what. So I'm going to call this thing here upstairs here, upstairs up at the top here. I'm going to call that indoor light just so that I remember that. And then I can add a couple of others. Uh, maybe I can't do that with the IRA viewport here. <laughs> oh thank you thank you for your subscription that's very kind i think my did my did my audio monitor just go off here usually i'm being alerted when there's a subscription so thank you so much very cool <laughs> very nice thank you so um point light yes let's create another one that's up here under create new point light with the default settings comes right in here and I'll move that uh, somewhere here. That's just a trial. One goes here. I think I want to go and copy this guy. You can share a link, Zinsim. Yeah, you can do that. It may be held for moderation, but uh, Julia can approve that. <laughs> Very cool. My return is lagging so far behind. It's like 10 minutes, 10 minutes in the past what I'm seeing here. It's terrible. There, that's, that's better. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. So that one, one uh, point light is here. And uh, the other one, I'm just going to go and copy that. So I'm going to go edit, duplicate, duplicate node. And now we have a second point light that we can put over here. We may move them around. Oh, they're actually too far down, so they need to be just a little bit further up. Like this guy as well. Yeah, so accurate placement, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. And then I'm gonna go and uh, copy this, this one more time. Uh, duplicate and I'm gonna go and select this guy and he is gonna be responsible for for offsetting the outside of our scene a little bit and again I need to play around with the values here but uh, my idea is that he's just gonna illuminate this part of our set here I may may should really do that with the with the spotlight but i think I'll, I'll just i'll just leave it like that let's go into the iray viewport and let's have a look at the camera and see if these two things give us a little bit more separation here between the objects yeah look at that so i can now see the chair already i can also see a little bit of the flower so I immediately like that. I think so that you guys can see this better. I'm going to move my scene tab from up here further down to here. So that now lets me look at this in iRay and it'll let me look at this in texture shaded. That's the, that's the idea. And then look at the perspective view here and then I can just keep an eye on the effects my, my lights have here. It's going to be easier for me to adjust them. So this I'm going to bring up some. If the interface lets me, of course. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I'm gonna name that flower light as well here, or plant light. Plant light, and then I'm gonna increase the intensity of that on the parameters tab. I'll do that uh, like I did before under the photometrics tab. I'm just gonna increase the luminous flux to uh, I probably don't need a hundred thousand, maybe like fifty thousand. Yeah, see that's already that's too much already. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna leave it at fifty thousand actually. And just use the intensity slider to drop that down. It's kind of easier. And now I'm keeping an eye on the on the top here to see if that if that does something. Yeah, you know, it's just just a little bit. It just doesn't need to be that much. Just ten percent is probably okay just to give a little bit of separation here. Great, and then the next candidate is this guy here. That's gonna be the floor light, I'm gonna call him, floor light. And once again, with that guy selected, photometrics, I'm gonna use the same value. Had I been intelligent about this, I would have made those adjustments before copying the light, of course, but that, that kind of escaped me. It's too far in the corner for my liking, so I'm going to put that here and slightly further up. In fact, maybe we can hide it underneath the chair. I'll try that. Because I'm not really after illuminating this part of the scene. I just want to make sure there's, there's a bit more interesting stuff drawn there. Did we even see that? We don't even get to see that, do we? So under the chair did not work out. Perhaps in front of the chair. Yeah, that'll kind of work. I'm gonna have a look after the stream there, Zin. I'm not ignoring your link. I'm just I'm just haven't had a chance to look at it yet. So I'm gonna have a look at that uh, once we're done here. Okay, so I think that's that's nice. This is maybe a little bit much, I'm not entirely sure, but I would like to try and illuminate this part of the scene uh, as well. So let me go and bring up that light here. That's gonna be the, the outside light. And uh, once again, I'm gonna go and make that 100,000 lumen. <laughs> oh great that is so nice i always like seeing what people do when when uh, when they found a tip or two helpful of mine thank you so much for letting me know that's really nice sometimes it's just this is a little bit i mean it's, it's, it's weird to say this but it's a little bit like a video game isn't it playing with das studio it's a little bit like a like a very intense version of the sims almost I think so too, David. Yeah, thank you. I'm trying to get a bit of separation in all these little brackets in here with that light. So I don't know if it's if it's beneficial to bring that light closer. It's probably a little close there. I think we just need to crank that up much more. Oh, hey, Nejek. Nice to see you. Am I spelling? Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Nejek. Is that is that how you say it? Oh, right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. First of all, uh, the, um, the distant light, uh, I'm going to, this is literally the next video coming up in the, in the series about, about DAS Studio lighting. The distant light doesn't have, let me just crank this up so that we can all see it here and see how, what the final product looks like. I uh, see this is this is a little too much here, isn't it? I think the plant light's nice. This is nice, but this is a little much here that needs to needs to come over here a little bit further. 
The distant light doesn't have a location, it only has a rotation. And it's very limiting in regards to to the I'll just switch it around, work in the in the viewport here. It it doesn't matter where you put it, it only it only recognizes the rotation and it emulates kind of a distant light like the sun and it's kind of fallen out of favor because it's been its effect has been replaced by IBL this is what I was after this is exactly the look I was after yes see that's exactly what I was thinking about I am pernickety rave, just flicking. This is exactly the look I wanted because now we get the separation between all these little pieces of wood and we see there's something else in there. If you don't do this, then you have a very flat looking image. Um, observe, please, if I go and switch these things off. And even the indoor light as well. Then we get this, we get this really... Uh, flat look and technically everything is in the scene but you wouldn't know this is a plant pot and this is a chair and this is actually uh, intricately modeled pieces of wood here if you leave all that out you get a really flat image so that's why I like um, I like adding you know these these pieces in here and a point light to finish off that that question I started 10 minutes ago there so I haven't forgotten that uh, a point light doesn't have a rotation so a point light only has a location and shines in all directions whereas a distant light only has rotation but it doesn't have a location and a spotlight combines these two things together and only shines in one direction with the rotation that's basically the difference between them the fall of no you can do that in the 3d light render engine there's a way to to do this on the linear point light uh, rod this if you go in 3d light these do have differences the point light is just like uh, a regular light bulb but the linear point light in 3d light has in fact a fall off but only in 3d light it doesn't make a difference in iray and the spotlight you can adjust the fall off like at the at the edges there how big and and how how much fall off there is very good explanation dream lab for distant lights absolutely um is there a way to hide shadows in iray no i don't think there is because it's a it's a ray based engine and as such it's kind of it's like wanting to hide shadows in reality i don't think it works unless you go for really soft light that's the only way in which you can uh, avoid shadows or make sure the shadows aren't as harsh uh, we will learn all that when we come to mesh lights in the upcoming mesh lights tutorial so what i'm planning is uh, to have the, the current one was the introduction. I've just uh, half recorded the parametric lights. Uh, then we're going to cover mesh lights. Then we're going to cover IBL lights, all for iRay. Those are all individual videos. And then we're going to cover those, all those things in 3D light as well. So that's, that's coming up. What's that? That's right. You can only turn off shadows in 3D light because they are created differently. They're created with uh, with the shadow map or with ray tracing, uh, but you can just switch them off. And the reason for that is that the uh, 3D light engine is um, better suited for kind of slower computers. And if you don't render shadows, it just renders faster. It doesn't look great, but it renders faster. Yeah, 3D Light. We only had 3D Light before. That's the only thing we had before iRay came along. And uh, it's difficult, it's more difficult to get a photorealistic look in your scenes. I'm just having second thoughts about the lighting in this scene. I'm thinking perhaps, oh, sorry. I'm just thinking perhaps we should have, um, we should have uh, a little bit more brightness in the scene. I don't know. No, I think I'm going to leave it. I think I'm going to leave it. Let's go render a final version out. And then look at that. We can even use the wonderful denoiser, of course. That's under filtering. Switch the denoiser on, then enable it. And perhaps uh, under progressive rendering, let's go and say 
thousand samples and let's go under general and say let's render in 1920 by 1080 so I'm just rendering with one card now, so it'll be. I'm, I could I could just render with two cards. Let me let me let me render with two cards. Let's let's do that while I have them. This is the last time, by the way. I can I can show you my two cards in action, if my uh, if my computer will do it while streaming and rendering with two cards. I don't know if it's going to work. If I go black, it's one of those things. It uh, I'll still be in the chat, but it'll take me a moment or so to. To restart my computer i hope it's not going to happen but hey <laughs> there we go <laughs> you will get there you will get there christina as christina has some terrible issues with her with her motherboard and basically the computer if i understood it correctly the computer is working but every time you open das it just doesn't want to do it right that's that's the issue Yes, uh, it's one of those things. 3D Lite has really fallen out of favor uh, in, uh, I'll just call it quick render. 3D Lite has really fallen out of favor since we've got the iRay engine. And it's such a shame because it's such a capable engine. Quick render. Let's have a look, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. That's the final image with the with the full render. I think that's that works all right. That works all right. No post work, by the way. It wouldn't have worked out had we not put the lights in here, the little bit of uh, the depth of field, and the indoor light. And so, so I'm, I'm I'm pleased with it. I'm pleased with it. It's kind of I was I, I kept thinking that would be it would be nice to have a series like the 20 minute portraits in which we create uh, portraits literally on the clock in in 20 minutes and you have to you really have to focus on what you want to do what you want to what you want to show and just do it quick and then if you have time left over and make it better and better at the end so that's something that i'm that i'm thinking about doing uh, at some point in like so many things my friends that was 15 minutes is not a lot of time what a shame, Christina. I'm sure we'll get it sorted. So my offer is still there. If you want to go over the BIOS or if you have any other computer questions, hit me up. Maybe, you know, maybe we can work it out together. My friends, thank you so very much for joining me on my birthday. You've been an amazing audience. I'm going to have the rest of my coffee here now. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed making this little scene here. Um, yes. As I said, last week's stream covered how to add a bit of atmospheric stuff to this. That would be really easy to do just by the same principle, add a fog plane in the front and just you know make that a little bit more hazy, that whole image. If you want the assets, go and sign up to be my Patreon supporter. It would I would be thrilled if you do. You get access to some goodies. I'm, uh, I'm adding, uh, there's a free copy of my book, for example. There's copies of my 3D products. There's uh, coming up next week, it's gonna be noise assets that I've used in the, in the opening sequence there when I distorted that thing that shattered and all that that is the kind of a vhs noise asset you get that it's uh, it's all very exciting so yeah do that and you get access to the fog assets as well uh, please join me tomorrow when we're doing subnautica saturday at 4 p.m eastern standard time and it'll be so exciting to go diving with you again monday if you're free monday 4 p.m eastern standard time join me for another round of scary classic portal that'll be via restream so i'm going to try and stream to facebook and to YouTube and to Twitch and most importantly to Mixer. Mixer is so much fun. The delay that we have between me saying something and you being able to react to it is about 10 seconds on YouTube. On Mixer, it's like less than a second. It's like real-time interaction. It is so cool. I would love to move all these, these uh, 3D shenanigans streams over to Mixer and do YouTube at the same time, but mainly have them done on Mixer. So if we want real-time interaction and questions and answers, they work so well on Mixer. My friends, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I will see you tomorrow. If not, Take care. Bye-bye.